So, with this one, I'll, I'll change it a little bit. So, <clears throat> from the lower limb perspective, lower limb, a little bit of flexion, the bottom leg, and the top leg, probably just keep it simple, okay? Place the foot in the crease. Some books will say variation depending on what level, but you can learn that as you go through. But in reality, it doesn't really matter too much, because if you think about it, it doesn't really change too much. Can you see if I change the position of the leg, it's not really changing too much to the lumbar. A little bit as you come into flexion, you can see it started to induce more posterior rotation. But in reality, just, just keep it quite simple from there. The hand come onto the pelvic area. And then this, now with this one, try not to over rotate. So let's say for instance, remember the iliac crest is in line with L4, the PSIS is in line with S2. So let's say we do an L4, L5. So I'm going to slowly pull his upper arm down to the level. Okay, but try not to over rotate past it. You don't have to put in so much rotation because you can control it in a different way. I normally will control the position of the neck, so we're looking up. And the hand now comes onto the wrist to stabilize. So from this position, so we're gonna say L4, five, okay? So find the crest on L4. Now from there, <coughs> now I'm gonna force John, okay? So, so I don't really know the history here. So if you remember from yesterday, I said a couple of things, or three things. Roll as if they're gonna fall, okay? So just take your time rolling them. <clears throat> so you can roll them as if he's gonna fall off the couch. Be careful with his arm here over the elbow because it's very tempting to push into his rib cage and he won't like it. You okay with this? Yeah. So from there, so I'm gonna roll. And you might find for you know the odd person, they cavitated, a couple of cavitated the essay just on this position. Okay, so I'm just slowly rolling him because he's forward. Now, <clears throat> what I'm gonna do now is get my body weight up and over him. So I'm gonna use my weight of my body through my forearm, watch this elbow, anywhere around the glutes. They don't like any of this pressure. So if you can, your body is going through the flatness of the forearm, you see that? And the movement is going in a side bending direction rather than in a rotation direction. So from this position here, okay, you are going to use your body weight and drop on him and mobilize the lumbar. Can you see where my thumb is? My thumb is only feeling it. Look at my thumb, okay? And look at the movement of the spine as I do this. See it? Okay, so that's more of a mobilizing technique. And if you only want to mobilize, only mobilize. If you're not sure what's going on with a disc, you know, neural pain, mobilize. If you want to go to the next stage and manipulate, Almost do it in, in not so much stages, but you know, maybe less is best in terms of pressure number one. Take a small breath, okay? And then almost as gentle as you can, just drop through there. So I use two pressures to see if I can cavitate at L4 or five. I'm not tempted to go into a pressure three or pressure four. And if it doesn't cavitate on those two, I'm probably not gonna do any more pressure. Because it doesn't have an audible click, like sometimes it would, most of the time it would, but um, it's still a gap in for that L4, L5 facet. Let's just